This video is part of a series helping you to revise for your GCSE Combined Science exams. Today we're looking at how to build an effective revision timetable for the 2022 exams using the advanced information published by the exam board. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the six timetables I'm using in this video. There's one each for the foundation and higher papers of biology, chemistry and physics. If you're preparing for the GCSE exams in 2022, then chances are this is your first time trying to craft a long term revision timetable. Even if you had end of year 10 exams and even if you've had mocks or pre-public examinations earlier this year, you probably haven't had any time off timetable to prepare for those. And you've probably had lots of other normal lessons and things going on around that. You also may not have taken those earlier exams quite as seriously as you're going to take these external exams because you knew that they weren't going to have such a big impact on your future. So you're now faced with trying to craft a revision timetable without really being sure what works for you. Now, when most people think of a timetable, they tend to think of something like this. It tends to have hour long slots with a specific subject and you just sort of turn up and you try to do something vaguely useful that links to that topic until the allocated time is over. Now, this can be really effective, particularly if you end up with study leave after May half term where you're allowed to stay home if you don't have an exam and you have big chunks of time that you need to sort of pin down what you're going to be doing. But there are some pitfalls in this kind of timetable, particularly if you're trying to make it work from this time of year when you still have normal lessons and you're still probably being given homeworks and revision tasks and things to do in between lessons. So, for instance, maybe you've planned to do some cell biology revision, but then your teacher gives you some photosynthesis exam questions. And that's a really useful use of your time, but it's not what you've got on the plan. Or maybe just life gets in the way of it and you miss a bus and you're late home and so you can't start revising at four when you plan to. Or maybe some other opportunities come up that you didn't know about when you were making that revision timetable. Or it could also just be things like hobbies getting in the way. It's too early in the year for you to be giving up everything else. But if you've had a rehearsal or training, then that can just get in the way of you being able to stick to this plan. And the problem is that if you're like me, you might find that once you've missed out part of the plan a few times, you start thinking that the whole thing is ruined and there's no point in it at all. And I should just throw away the timetable. And even if you don't catastrophize like that, this can still leave you feeling quite overwhelmed and anxious, particularly because it's not very specific about what you need to do and it doesn't give you much of an indication of what you've done. So is there a better way? Well, yes, I think there is. For the last couple of years, I've recommended plans like this one, and you can download mine for combined science in the description below. There's one each for foundation and higher for the biology, chemistry and physics papers of combined science. The idea behind this plan is that there is no plan. You start with an idea of how much time you can commit. And then instead of saying, I'm going to do this specific topic on this specific day, you keep a record of what you've revised. So this is about making sure that you're spreading your efforts out so that all of the different topics are being covered and that you're putting more effort into the ones that are going to give you more marks. But it's not about pinning down a specific topic to a specific day. Now, as an additional note, in 2022, we know which are the major topics and particularly for biology that some topics won't be assessed. So what I've done is I've added in an extra line if a topic definitely appears in a paper so that we can spend more time revising it. So, for instance, cell division gets twice as much time as cell structure. I've also added in separate lines for the required practicals that we know will be in those papers. They only get one line because each practical is just a tiny part of a wider topic. Anything that's not mentioned, like cell structure, still gets a line because it can and will still be assessed in low tariff questions, those one and two mark questions. So you're not going to get six marks on it, but you don't want to neglect revising it completely. Particularly in biology, there are a few topics that are ruled out. For chemistry, there's literally only one line in paper two. Physics, it's kind of in between. But for those ones, I've greyed out the topics that we specifically know are not going to be assessed. Now, practically speaking, how is this actually going to work? What is it that you need to do? Well, the idea here is that each box of the grid represents 20 minutes of revision. If you're only just starting to use the system in February, then it's not realistic that you would expect to fill in the full grid. You just won't have time alongside your other subjects, but this should give you sufficient room to keep track of all the revision that you do. 
I've put some ideas along the top for different ways that you might want to try revising. Now, it might be the case that you already have one particular method that you are very keen of using and that you know works for you, and that's fine. But even if that is the case, I would strongly recommend that as part of your revision for each topic, you spend some time looking at the exam board specification and making some notes. Now, that's for a couple of reasons. One, it's because it's the exact wording that the exam board want you to use, and that's not always accurately reflected in revision guides and other websites. And also, particularly where they've said that they're going to examine some parts of topics and not others this year, then you can actually refer to the number codes and see what's in and what's out. And that's particularly valuable this year for physics. Now, if you haven't already found the specification, this is the website address where you can find it for AQA GCSE Science. The other resource that you might not be sure where to find are these recall questions. So I've written these for every topic of GCSE Combined Science. So if you go to this web address or follow the link, then you'll be able to find the recall questions for biology um, unit one. But then if you change the number, then you get to all the rest of the biology topics. And likewise, you can change chemistry or physics in there as well. So each time that you do 20 minutes of revision, you're just going to note down the date so that you can keep track of how much you've done. So say, for instance, on Monday, you start off and you look at the specification for properties of substances, and then you watch a YouTube video and make some notes. And then you make some flashcards, which you haven't had a chance to use yet. And all that together takes you an hour. So you write down the date three times. And then in a few days time, you look at the specification for that diamond and graphite topic. And then you spend a bit of time using a revision app. And then you decide to also do another section on that app. So that gets noted down as well. And then a few days after that, you decide, oh, actually, I do need to look at the specification for that third topic that I did. And then you watch a couple of YouTube videos and make some notes. So as you're going along, you're constantly writing down what it is that you've done. Having a system like this also allows you to really easily check in with yourself and make sure, have you been spreading your efforts sensibly? And are there some gaps that you need to go back into and refill? So, for instance, if you get to the Easter holidays and your plan looks a bit like this, then you're going to notice that there are some things that you've neglected. So here we haven't looked at the required practicals at all. And so you're going to need to prioritise them. And also energy transfers and changes of state haven't been given as much time as they maybe should have done. But at the same time, we've got conservation and current potential difference and resistance that you've put a lot of time into revising. But actually, they're only minor topics they are only going to be worth a few marks. So at that point, you can say to yourself, you know what, I need to stop. I need to not revise those things anymore and instead prioritise the major topics and the required practicals. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you're now feeling more confident about how to structure your revision for GCSE Science. Don't forget to download the timetables from the link in the description below. And if you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science content coming soon.